number 10 then. Triangle vectors. Working your way around triangles it looks like. It says PR can be represented by this vector, 6, negative 4, that's heading that way. RQ, so that's heading that way, is negative 1, 8. You have to express PQ in component form. So I want to go from here to here. Well, start at P, go to R, and then once you're at R, go to Q. You just go to In order to find that, you take the long way around. Because you know these two? You can even just add them in your head in the spot there. 6, negative 4, and negative 1, 8. So that's going to be adding the x components, 5, and adding the y components, negative 4 and 8, 8 taken away 4, 4. Now B, express MQ. Well, there's M, and it says M is the midpoint in component form. Well, just follow the same path. How can you get from M to Q? What's MQ? So I'll go from M to R, and then I'll go from R to Q. Now, no R to Q. What's M to R? Well, it's half of PR, and you know PR. It's a half of PR and then R to Q. So it's a half of, PR was 6, negative 4, RQ is negative 1, 8, not enough space. Now you could half them first, then add them, or you could just be brave and go straight in with the answer here. A half of 6 is 3, take away 1 is 2, a half of negative 4 is negative 2, plus 8 takes you to 6. Number 11 then, there we go, Look, there's a diagram involving circles and angles. Three marks for finding a certain angle. Pam is designing a company logo. She starts by drawing a regular pentagon inside of a circle, then adds this extra bit for a bit of ingenuity here, this little delta kite at the bottom. Looks so much better now. AF is a diameter goes through the centre from one point of the circumference to its diametrically opposite point. Now it says, calculate the size of angle O, that's all you want to know, O, F, B. O is the centre, O, F, B. This is the angle you want here. With three marks. Well, it's easy if you can just fill the numbers into the, the triangle. But the way that would work with this would be, you can find this angle first of all, because that splits the circle into five equal parts. So angle AOB. Angle AOB is going to be 360 divided by 5. That's 72 degrees. Once you know that 72 degrees, you can find the one beside it here. Now you're stepping into this isosceles triangle. It's actually a way you can go from this 72 to this angle in one go. That used to be taught in schools. And that was, in a circle, the angle subtended by two points in the circumference at the centre is double the angle subtended at another point in the circumference. So if that's 72, that's 36. But they don't teach that anymore, so I'll have to step through it. If that's 72, that's going to be the supplementary angle. So angle BOF is going to be 180 minus 72. Because you see what's going to happen now, we're going to have to take it away from 180 afterwards, take it, which is 108, which means now the angle I want OFB, since I know this one's 108, will be take it away from 180, see what I mean, and then half it. It will be a half of 180 minus 108, that's why it seems so pointless, a half of 72, which I said at the beginning, the angle of circumference is half the angle of the centre, which is 36. Number 12 then, three marks for express this fraction with a rational denominator and also make sure your answer is in its simplest form. So just now it's got an irrational denominator. You don't care what happens on top, but I want the bottom to be nice. Well, the way to do that is to multiply the square root of 40 by the square root of 40. 
That means you'll have to multiply the top also by the square root of 40, or you won't have the same fraction anymore. Now, multiplying the square root of 40 by the square root of 40 reconstitutes the 40. Now you've got a rational denominator. Okay, you've got squares on top, but that doesn't really matter. Square root of 2 times square root of 40 is the square root of 80 now. Now what are you going to do? It needs simplifying. Can you find any perfect squares in 80? You could do it in bits and pieces, but there's a 16 in there. That's 16 times 5. So the square root of 80 is going to be the square root of 16 times the square root of 5, which is 4 root 5. And then finally cancel those down, so you've got root 5 upon 10. Of course, you could go other ways. You could do that division to begin with and just make that 1 over root 20. So you've done some simplification to begin with. So if you had 1 over root 20, you'd have root 20 over 20. And that might have been easier to find the perfect square lurking inside, which is what's necessary to simplify it.